All right, let's shift our attention over to the southern border. I think more Americans are more concerned yeah. about what's going on at our southern border. Once again, under your administration, we had low border crossings, really relatively no drugs coming across the border. Now, over 300 people a day die of some kind of fentanyl poisoning. Uh, what's your plans on the border, obviously, to restore the wall? But many are asking for some type of war on the drug cartels, and, and if that was possible. But what, what's your thoughts on that? So we had the safest border in the history of our country, or at least recorded history. I guess maybe a thousand years ago was even better, right? But we had the safest in the history of our country. Uh, I built hundreds of miles of wall. I got uh, Mexico to give us 28,000 soldiers free by using our economic power. And I had a great relationship with the president of Mexico. But using our economic power, we were able to get 28,000 soldiers for nothing. And we created Stay in Mexico. We also created a uh, system that nobody thought possible. If you're sick, you can't come into our country. And nobody even knew about that but me. And we had the safest border in history. We had the lowest drug numbers, I think, in 37 years. And they were going down to very little. And I even worked with China. I spoke to President Xi. And I said, you have to do something about the fentanyl that you're making and sending to Mexico. They're making it, yeah. And he was doing that, and he was starting to do it. And I said, you have to criminalize it, meaning death penalty for those people that make it. And he was going to criminalize it, and he had started. And then we had a rigged election. And the other people took over, and it's the worst border we've ever had. I believe it's the worst border in the history of the world for any country, because there's no country, even a third world country, that would allow people to pour in like they're pouring in now. And I believe the real number could be 15 million people, not three or four million. I believe it's 15 million. And they're emptying their prisons and they're emptying their, they're putting in uh, people in their jails and prisons. They're putting them into our country and they're putting their mental patients and from their mental hospitals and those kind of places, they're dumping them into our country. They're saving a fortune. I, by the way, I'd be doing exactly what they're doing. They're saving a fortune. They're taking their mental patients out. They're taping their prisoners out, and they're putting them into the United States. They're putting people that aren't very good workers into the United States, people that haven't been productive. We're taking everybody. It's killing our country. Well, I, on the border, I would not be having an open border. Um, there have been, you know, the border, I've been to the border and I've watched what's going on there and it's shocking the border. You know, our, we have our, we've turned our immigration policy over in this country to the Mexican drug cartels. And I watch um, bus after bus owned by the cartels coming up to the, to the border wall and letting each one of them 55 pa um, passengers uh, in fact, the night I was there, I saw about 300 people come across and only two families were even were Latin American or Central American. There were uh, one family from Peru and another from Colombia. Uh, but most of them were just from all from Africa and from Asia, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Pakistan, uh, Afghanistan, China. And they were people, for the most part, who didn't even claim to have asylum claims. They, they said, you know, when I asked, because I interviewed almost all the people who came across that night, except for the African group who came across first and were being processed by the time I got to them. And so I wasn't allowed to talk to them. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's all illegal. And yet the Mexican drug cartels are advertising all over the world saying, send us $15,000 and we will get you into the United States. And they're doing that. And the people who came across, you know, had TikTok. They were at, at where they, they'd seen the videos on TikTok and YouTube. And they knew exactly what was going to happen to them. They knew, they knew the Border Patrol would process them immediately and then provide them with a plane ticket to go anywhere in the country they wanted. And it's not a good thing for our country and it's not a good thing for them. I saw them, you know, it's a humanitarian crisis. Um, these people were extorted, exploited. They were robbed, raped in, in one case that we talked to. You um, saw somebody being raped? No, no, not. We never saw anybody, but we talked to people and we visited the center uh, and spent a half a day at the center that treats the people who've been raped on the way over, and many of them children as young as 11 years old. And there's a center in Yuma 
um, that a medical center just for children who have been sexually abused crossing the border, 85,000 children so, disappeared. Ms. Mr. Kent, I just want to double check um, on the border issue before we move on to some of the other issues. Does it matter where they're from? I mean, you're, you're sort of trying to correct some misimpressions that it's all people from Latin America. Does it really matter if they're also from China and Africa and other places? Yeah, because I think a lot of the people, you know, the impression is that that people who are coming across the border are all people from Central America and Latin America who have asylum claims, who are fleeing uh, uh, tyranny, oppression, uh, murder threats in their own country for po their political beliefs. And um, and that is not what I saw. And that may, there may be a lot of cases like that. And those people, you know, one of the things I'll do as president is to make sure that we have enough asylum judges to adjudicate those cases fairly at the border and make sure that people who need protection are brought in but that the people who are making frivolous claims are not allowed into our country we we need to control our borders we need to widen the gates to make it you know the, a, a path for citizenship yeah. much easier for people who are legally applying and getting in line but um, we can't have the Mexican drug cartel control our immigration. And, you know, these, the people who I saw come across are walking into a nightmare in our country. And here's why. They're given court dates that are seven miles in the future. But for seven years, they're going to live in our country. And they are, you know, there's 100,000 now that have landed in New York. They're crushing the social ser uh, service system in that, in the, the New York City. It's costing billions and billions of dollars. They're preyed upon because they don't have work papers and they can't get them over that seven year period. No, so it is a, it is a human tragedy. I mean, it's it sounds in a bit like you're more you're more aligned with the the sort of GOP stance on that particular issue. Is that fair to say? Well, I, I you know whatever I, alignment. Listen, I work for. Well, alongside with Cesar Chavez, who is my father's, you know, strongest ally, right? For Twenty years, and he had two issues. The one I was working with him on, and you know, when I was a ball bear in his funeral, when I was working on with pesticides, the other big issue he has was closing the border, because it was he saw that it was eroding the uh, the, the bargaining leverage for American workers. It was lowering their wages. His farm workers were being harmed. Uh, by the open borders policies at that time so that and he was at the center of the democratic party as was my father i don't think democrats or republicans you know are really interested traditionally in having open, an open border you need yeah. you know we we need asylum for people around the country that's around the world what i'm trying to tell you is the people who are motivated by saying you know these are humanitarian issues we need to open the border to be kind to people the people who are coming across are not being uh it's not a kind atmosphere they're landing here they're, they're preyed upon by unscrupulous employers who pay them five or six dollars an hour just and they're 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 working for food because they cannot get a place to stay they're living on the sidewalks working for food lowering the wages for american workers crushing our social safety system and making our country less safe it's not a good thing for anybody including them so let, let me people who are concerned about this issue because of you know because of uh misogyny or, or xenophobia or you know racism or, or some kind of a cruel form of nationalism but I, that's not where i come from to uh, come to this issue i come from this issue from a humanitarian concerns and compassion the top person from mexico came in just right under the president who's a friend of mine i mean he's a great guy he came in and i said you're gonna have to give us twenty-eight thousand shows no 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 we will not do that i said yes you will and he said no no we will not do that i said here's the story it was a Friday evening. I said, on Monday morning at 7 o'clock in the morning, you're going to be paying a tariff or tax of 25% of every car. You know, they stole 32% of our car industry, just so you know. They send us millions of cars. Of every car and every product from Mexico into the United States, you're going to be paying a tariff. And here are the papers right here. I'm going to sign them now. But it goes to effect 7 o'clock on Monday morning. 
And he said, uh, may I make a phone call? <laughs> and I said, you may. Came back in five minutes. Sir, it would be our honor to put 28,000 soldiers on the border to protect you from some very bad people. I was against Trump's wall. But having seen it down there, I see that there, there's, you were required to give a physical bar barrier during certain, not all the way, 2,200 miles from San Diego to Brownsville, Texas, but certain highly densely populated areas, you need a physical barrier. But in the hinterlands, in the wilderness areas, you can use sensors like they do in Israel, the ground sensors and the towers. Sensors of AI breakthroughs too. Uh, but only, but uh, you would rebuild, you would resume the building of, of Trump's uh, border wall? Well, a lot of it now has been rebuilt. You know, it, we, uh, Mayorkas, who's the DHS secretary, recognized that the gaps in that wall, that we shouldn't have left them. But it's not, it's not so much the wall, it's the other censoring devices that were all uh, ripped up you know, which is, I'm very embarrassed to say by this administration, by the Democratic administration. And also the policies were changed so that the presumption is everybody gets in. And I witnessed it myself. And we can't have well, that. Well, everybody's not getting in. Yes, everybody gets in. There are crowds of people waiting to try and apply through the new app that the Biden administration has set up. They're setting up- As for legal set. immigration. Oh, you're talking about illegal immigration. I'm talking illegal immigration. Everybody gets in. I watched it. Seven million people have come in. Just the, the, the one little section I, I was at in Yuma, there's 350,000 people came here before. But what, you know, I met with the Yuma authorities. I met with the hospitals. I met with the, you know, the, 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 the centers that take care of the immigrants who are, you know, beleaguered. I met with the Border Patrol and the sheriff, and everybody agreed it could be stopped. It could be wound down to what it was before this administration, which was about 25 people a day, which is not a big problem. But having now, it's 300 to 800 a day. And that, you know, no nation can survive if they can't protect their borders. We need, I would, you know, as president, I will expand legal immigration. I will make it easier, particularly for workers to come across on the H visas and, um, and then, you know, and bring in and have an orderly system that benefits our country. We need immigration is good for our country. This kind of immigration is unfair to everybody and particularly to the immigrants that have been brought here. And then over the long term, they, you know, the immigrants that have poured in from Latin America, a lot of them are coming up because of policies, wrongful policies that the U.S. has had the drug wars, the, uh, the austerity programs. The support of Hunta is the, you know, the war on the poor that we've maintained so for so many years, and we need to change those policies as you, well. You, Mr. President, you've no, also either. said immigrants are, illegal immigrants are poisoning our blood. What do you mean by that? When you look at it, and you look at what's coming in, we have from all over the world, not one group, they're coming in from Asia, from Africa, from South America, they're coming from all over the world, they're coming from prisons. They're coming from mental institutions and insane asylums. They're terrorists. Absolutely. That's poisoning our country. That's poisoning the blood of our country. And that's what's happening. And we're not talking about a specific group. We're talking about these are, this is equal opportunity. They're coming from all over the world. And we have no idea who they are, where they are. They have people coming in. We don't even know what the language is that they speak. We have nobody that speaks the language. And they're loading up our classes we're loading up our classes, our school classes, with children that don't speak the language. They don't speak our language, and nobody knows what's going on. Now, we, uh, we are poisoning our country. We're poisoning the blood of our country. We have people coming in. Think of it. Mental institutions all over the world are being emptied out into the United States. Jails and prisons are being emptied out into the United States. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez confessed open borders are necessary so she gets her food delivered on time. What we've been struggling with now is that asylum seekers that come to New York City are legally have not been able to find a job and support themselves. And the kicker is that so many people are trying to hire, are actually trying to hire folks in agricultural sectors, hotel sectors. They want to hire asylum seekers. So you've got, you've got small businesses, American companies that want to hire uh, 
you know, immigrants. And you've got immigrants that want to work. Uh, yeah, why do they want to hire immigrants? Oh, because they can pay them dirt cheap wages and no health care. And Biden just shattered his own record. Nearly a quarter million illegals broke into the country last month. So it's clear there is no border security. They're just using the border as a vacuum for Latin America and for all over the world. Biden's confessing, too. He's not even pretending he's trying to stop illegal immigration. It's just an amnesty plan. Watch. We're significantly expanding legal pathways for entry so businesses can get the workers they need. Families don't have to wait for a decade to be together. I've also directed my team to make a historic increase in the number of refugees admitted from Latin America. RFK Jr. seems to be the only Democrat trying to do something about migration. He's down in Texas tonight, and he joins me now. So you just heard AOC and the president say they're just trying to match third world workers with American companies. What's wrong with that, RFK Jr.? It's just a business plan. Well, there's nothing wrong with it if it's legal immigration. Uh, the problem is the open border uh, is not a way to do that. And I understand that a lot of the Democrats uh, promoted this policy at the beginning of the Biden administration out of a humanitarian impulse, but it's been a catastrophic, catastrophic failure. It's caused a humanitarian crisis at the border. Our border policies are now being administered by the Mexican drug cartels. We brought 7 million illegal immigrants into this country over the past three years. We, and most of them, by the way, when I went down there, Jesse, we only ran, I, I interviewed about 300 immigrants coming across. Only two of them, the two groups from Latin America, had a, any kind of asylum claims. The rest of them said, we're just here right. to work. It's, being and it's fine to bring people here to work. We ought to. Right. We ought to have an open gate. You know, we ought to have open gates that encourage legal immigration and make it an easier path to citizenship. But just to open the borders, there's no country in the world that can do that and survive. And, but RFK, you know, we RFK, have, we talk Mayor about Eric Adams. Yeah, we talk about how it's a humanitarian crisis for the migrants. Yes, it is. But it's becoming a humanitarian crisis for the American people. Do the Democrats in Washington is. see either of those things? I don't think that President Biden sees it. He's doubling down on this policy. He announced this week that he's giving amnesty to 470,000, only almost half a million Venezuelan immigrants who've come across over the last three years, and this is a really bad message. What that's going to do, it's going to drive a new tsunami of immigration because people are now going to say, oh, you know, if we come across illegally, we are going to get a path to citizenship. It's not the way to conduct an immigration policy. It's doubling down on a very, very bad policy. As you said, Mayor Adams, Eric Adams, who's the mayor of New York, has, has said this is killing New York. This is going to destroy the city. It is crushing the social service systems. It, the, the cost so far to New York City has been $12 billion. There's 110,000 illegal immigrants in the city. They have nowhere to go. They cannot work. Uh, there, It is a disaster for everybody who lives in the city. And now what this policy has done is to turn every city in this country into a border town. We have to have orderly immigration into this, into this country. This is not the way to conduct it. And what we did today is to call on all Democrats to unify with Republicans and independents and ask President Biden to reassess this experiment on the border because it has been a disaster for our country. It has been, and I hope he listens. I'm not sure he will, but I really hope he listens because we need to figure this out fast before it's too late. RFK Jr., thanks as always. Have a great weekend. Stay safe down there. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else. I feel like the whole country needs to know what's going on here. It's bigger than alarming. This is the worst I've ever seen it. I witnessed this dystopian nightmare of this uncontrolled flow of desperate 
humanity crossing the border and converging here because of misbegotten policies by high leadership of the United States. When uh, President Biden took office, he signed some executive orders that basically halted all wall construction. It put our agents at risk. It put the migrants at risk. It incentivized the profit making for the smugglers. At the end of the day, this is a business. Billions and billions of dollars every month are earned from transporting people across into the United States. These kids are being exploited all along this track. There's nothing humane about any of this. In this room, obviously, we, we designed it to be as comfortable as we can possibly make it because the reality is no child should ever have to come to this exam room. Señora y mi están conmigo. We see a lot of violence as people are making across the border through Mexico or their countries. We see that devastation in, in the human lives. What happens if, if the family doesn't have the money to buy the plane ticket? Uh, well, FEMA reimburses says we can we can buy that ticket and and. Uh, so you it. buy the ticket for it. Yes. They were told they get a buy the American dream here, and um, that dream becomes a nightmare along the journey. What we need in the United States is not division. What we need in the United States is not hatred. What we need in the United States is not violence and lawlessness, but is love and wisdom and compassion toward one another. Every nation has a darker side, and the easiest thing for a politician to do is to appeal to our hatred and our anger and our bigotry and greed and xenophobia and all of the alchemies of demagoguery. My father and my uncle had a vision for America, a vision of racial harmony, of prosperity for all Americans, of peace in the world, and of honest government. Their lives were tragically cut short, and America took a different path. Yet the possibility they foresaw is still alive, the America that almost was, and yet may be. I've been fighting corporate corruption my entire life, but I understand that today, the problem is much larger than a few crooked individuals. The problem is a system that no longer serves the people and a people who are so divided and so fearful that they are easily ruled. It's time to unlearn the reflexes of fear and blame and find ways to unify ourselves and turn our country around. I won't pretend to you that it will be easy, but I know what it will take. My father said it, love, wisdom and compassion toward one another. And that's where we need to start. We will scale down the war machine and bring our resources home. We will rebuild our water systems, repair our roads, modernize our railroads, and clean up our environment. We will also clean up government and earn back the people's trust. We will end the secrecy, the censorship, and the surveillance. We will again be a fearless land of liberty. The cost of freedom is always high, but Americans have always paid it. We will face honestly the darker parts of our history, the genocide, the racism, not to shame or blame or punish, but to repair as best we can in a spirit of compassion and kindness toward all. I'm inviting all of you to join me to create an America that we can believe in and be proud of again. I'm Robert F. Kennedy, Jr., and I'm running for President of the United States. Well, I've come here today to announce my candidacy for the Democratic nomination for President of the United States. My mission over the next 18 months of this campaign and throughout my presidency will be to end the corrupt merger of state and corporate power that is threatening now 
is threatening now to impose a new kind of corporate feudalism on our country, to commoditize our children, our Purple Mountain's majesty, to poison our, our children and our people with chemicals and pharmaceutical drugs, to strip mine our assets, to hollow out the middle class and keep us in a constant state of war. The most controversial thing you've said is the illegal immigrants are poisoning our blood. Will you explain again? What do you mean by that? Exactly what I said. People are pouring into our country totally unchecked. Zero. We have no idea where they come from, who they are. They're pouring in because of Biden. He has an open door policy, which is insane. They're coming from many different continents. They're just not coming from the four countries that we talk about. They're not coming from, you know, purely Mexico and Guatemala and Honduras, El Salvador, which is more typical. They're coming from all over the world. They're coming from Asia. They're coming from Africa. They're coming from all over the world. They're coming out of prisons. They're coming out of jails. They're coming out of mental institutions and insane asylums. These people are very sick. They, there are many criminals and there are many terrorists. You know, they did a recent story. They were showing that in 2019, during Trump, they found no terrorists for a long, for the whole, almost a whole year. They never, in other words, in recapturing or capturing, they had zero terrorists coming in through Trump because they knew the penalty. I had the ban. I had the travel ban. I had a lot of things. They knew the penalty would be great. Under Biden, every day it's a record. They actually had none. I couldn't believe it myself, to be honest with you. They had zero. They had in 2022, zero. Joe Biden had uh, more than 165 people on the terrorist watch list in the last year of your that's presidency. Right. I believe it was zero. I have those numbers for the NBC we debate, so zero. you're absolutely and, right. And that's because, that's because of my, let's say that's because of my way. They knew that they couldn't do it, and they didn't. But I was even surprised. I was very impressed by that number. It said zero. I had it checked, and they actually had zero. And he's setting records every single week. He's setting records of terrorists pouring into our country. So the answer is they are poisoning our country. They're poisoning the blood of our country. And I'm not talking about a specific group. And I never read Mein Kampf. And I have no idea what Hitler said other than I've seen on the news. And that's a very entirely different thing than what I'm saying. They're, poor, they're destroying our country. They're coming in from every continent and we have no idea, we have no idea who they are, what they represent. Are they from jails? Are they from prisons? And I will tell you, a big percentage of the people coming in are from prisons and from mental institutions and are terrorists. Just tell us, where are you on, on funding of foreign wars? And then I want to get to the border. So quick, if you can keep it tight. Yeah, so you're asking me about a Trump a Kennedy ticket that... Uh, that might be a successful ticket politically, but it would not maritally. It would be a uh, catastrophe for me, Eric. So I, I, don't, I don't think that that's in the cards. Uh, you know, my, my, I'd say my principal plat, uh, platform is trying to balance the budget, and you start doing that by, by unraveling the empire, by winding down all these political commitments we have abroad, I mean, these military commitments, the overextension of our military. Take a listen to Joe Biden yesterday coming back from his vacation. Listen to what he had to say. So if you, if you couldn't hear that, it was he came off uh, at Marine One, come back for the vacation. The reporter said, what are you going to do about the border? He stopped and he was lost. He said, well, just give me more money. I'll, I'll, I'll fix the border. More money, RFK Jr. Uh, it strikes me that Biden has had plenty of money to fix a lot of things. It strikes me also that he may be using this yeah, border uh, crisis to spend a trillion dollars of our money uh, over, over his, uh, his term uh, and, and kind of use that as his little Bidenomics stimulus. Where is, where is Robert F. Kennedy on the border? How do you fix that? I, I mean, it's crazy because he, he found $113 billion 
to send to Ukraine and another 24 billion. Now he's asking for another 61 billion. If you want to really uh, uh, serve America's national security, we can find the money to protect our border. And it's not money that they need. It is a commitment. It's an executive order ending the catch and release uh, policy. It's putting enough asylum judges down on the border that they can adjudicate the cases before, before they come over. The, the monies that he's actually looking for, most of them, are monies that are going to uh, allow, they're going to amplify the job, the current role of the Border Patrol, which is processing immigrants into this country. If, if President Biden wanted, would actually went down there, as I have done, talk to the, the directors of the Border Patrol, law, local law enforcement, people on both sides of the border, he would understand that this is something that can be done immediately. This is the biggest emergency and the biggest national security threat to our country. Victory cannot come soon enough as we speak. The last remnants of our open border, and it's an open, broken border like nobody's ever seen in a third world country. No third world country would have a border like this. They'd fight them with sticks and stones if they had to. It's crumbling into rubble. Millions of people are storming the United States in the largest illegal mass migration in the history of the world. There's never been, you'd look at the pictures, there's never been a migration like that. There's never been an invasion like that. Hundreds of thousands of people on a quarterly basis, like, and tough people, tough people. Uh, they had some prisoners from Congo, the Congo the other night. Where do you come from, uh, the Congo? Where were you? We were in prison. Why? Murder. Oh. And if you look at the, the population, the prison population all over the world, it's at the lowest number, they say. I don't know. I just read the stuff. But it makes sense because these, you know, dictators and presidents and prime ministers, they're all smart. They're all cunning people. I'd do it. They're bringing them up to our border. They're getting rid of them. They're putting them into our country. They're all, they're in our country. Their prisons are emptying out. Many of them are totally empty. They're taking MS-13, the toughest gang members, anywhere in the world. They make our gang members look like the nicest guys. You want to take them home and introduce them to your daughter. <laughs> they make our gang members look like sweethearts, right? And their prisons are emptying out. Their mental institutions are... Do you know what these countries are saving? There was an article in the paper the other day about a psychiatrist a couple of months ago. And he's sitting reading a paper at a desk, a very plain desk, plain chair, nice guy. He said, look, I used to work 25 hours a day. I worked all the time. That's all I did. But now I don't have anybody to work with because they've all gone to the United States. He was a psychiatrist, I guess, or whatever. And he was saying this hospital was loaded with people. But now we don't have those people anymore. They said, where are they? Oh, they're in the United States. Now, do you know what that's saving countries? Same thing with the jails. And terrorists are coming in also. What they're doing to our country is not, it's, it's, when you talk about insurrection, what they're doing, that's, that's the real deal. That's the real deal, not patriotically and peacefully. Peacefully and patriotically. You ever see Maxine Waters talk about the, the Republic? You go in there and you whack them. It makes you, it makes you sick. Rhonda Sanctimonious, Nikki Haley, and the rest of the pack will never do what it takes to secure the border because they're owned by big money Wall Street establishment donors. Now, Ron's lost most of them because he's failed. You know, Fox gave up on him. That was the end of him. They realize you need a little personality to do this stuff. It helps to have a little personality. It helps when you don't have to use it. So far, I've used the teleprompter about 14. But isn't it better this way? I could read that teleprompter all day long. Biden can't even read the teleprompter. The other day, Matt, he's given a, a, a thing. He's a news conference because he hasn't had one in about six years or something. Can't have it. You can't have a news. So he picks a, he goes, Bill from NBC, NBC, over here. Uh. So the guy asked him a very simple question, like about vanilla ice cream. But then they actually asked him a question about a border or something. So he goes, they ask him a question, Bill from NBC, they ask him a question. Um, the border is very strong. 
Uh, it's very normal. And things are going very well on the border. Oh, thank you very much for the news conference. Thank you. And then he walks into a wall. But this is what we have as our president. We're going to end up in World War III. We're going to end up in a depression. I'll tell you, if I'm not elected, I think we're going to end up in a depression like in 1929. Because, you know, if you ever notice, every time a good, like all the polls now say that I'm beating him, but you almost say, who wouldn't? This beautiful child, this young man, he's, how old is he, three? He would, I would vote for him over Biden because he's more intelligent. Look, the kid's three years old. He's got better judgment. You ever hear some of the people in Obama administration, Secretary of State, different people, and others, many others, they say there's never been anybody worse on foreign policy decisions. And I see it. You know, we're stuck in that whole thing with Ukraine. Very tough war to win. The one's a war machine, the other one's not. And uh, very, very tough to win. And they you know, say, we will not leave until there's total victory. It's not happening that way, is it? You know, do you know, you know how you know it's not? Because they don't cover it anymore in the fake news. You know, if they were doing well, they'd be covering it. So you sort of know that way. But just as I said, one of the biggest donors to Nikki Haley's super PAC is the same guy, Reed Hoffman. He's a ultra left rich guy, billionaire, who's one of the Democrat Party's uh, top funders. He's also a funder for Nikki Haley. How do you answer that, Nikki? Well, and they're trying to stop Trump. So what they want to do is they'd much rather run against the sanctimonious or Nikki, but they're the party of disinformation, and they're great at it. They are great at it. You know, if they'd use this genius for, like, making our country great, we'd be great in about two weeks. But they don't. They want to destroy our country. But they're always saying, we want to run against Trump. You know, you have a 50-point lead. So they say, you know, uh, from the standpoint of the national polls, I mean, I think I have a 60-point lead or something like that, beating her by 55 points in South Carolina, where she comes from. But they don't want to run against me. Ask them, how did they do in 2016? And then other than their cheating, we killed them in 2020. They don't want to run against me. They want to run against – and I'm the one that's beating them in the polls. There's some narrative out there, oh, she's going to – no – and the same thing that happens to me is going to happen to them, just so you understand. They'll be indicted because they'll say she was having an affair or something, you know. That doesn't mean it's lying. But she'll be indicted for something. Ron DeSanctimonious will be indicted. And he's not going to handle it the same way as I handle it. He'll be in a corner crying, saying, Mommy, Mommy, I want to go home. He's not going to handle it this way. You think anybody else could get up here and speak to you all day and and get indicted four times and have you f nine trials against them? All fake trials? <laughs> Nobody else. Nobody else. I love that <laughs> Nobody else. Most countries on Earth have a set of rules. If you want to enter their country and wander around in their country, you need to follow a certain set of rules. In the United States, we have some laws and yet we don't seem to follow the laws on the border. Under what authority can the Biden administration simply suspend the law of the land? Oddly, the, the Biden administration is in denial about it. They deny it. It's happening. But I think this week we we're averaging something like 14,000 people a day coming across. I've been to the border. Uh, I watched uh, between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. in the morning at Yuma. 300 people come across the border. I was surprised, one, by the, the, um, the, the constituency about where they were, the origins of most of those people. The first 110 were from West Africa. I expected to see a lot of Latin American and Central American uh, political refugees uh, and economic refugees. But then the second group of about 110, they were coming on buses of 55 each that were operated by the drug cartels. And they were coming from Mexicali, where they're picked up at the airport and then brought to the U.S. border and passed. They pay the cartels $10,000 apiece. And we have a situation now, because of the laxity of the, of the, uh, of the Biden administration's uh, response, the Mexican drug cartels are actually running U.S. immigration policy. And the second group of people, the second two buses that came across were from mainly from Asia. There were some from Ukraine. They were 
Um, uh, Azerbaijan, from Tajikistan, uh, Tajikistan, from Afghanistan, from Kazakhstan, from uh, Nepal, Tibet, China, a lot of from China and Bangladesh. And I interviewed the, the site, about 110 of them, and all of them except for two. There was one family from uh, Peru, another from Colombia, and who said that they had asylum claims, that they were fleeing terror. And the other ones all said, I'm here for a job. And that is, there's no legality to that. You're right. not allowed to come in. You're, you can't step in. And yet the Border Patrol is forced on, under the Biden administration's policy. To do, they do one test of them, which is a fingerprint test. And if they don't have a criminal record, then the Border Patrol brings them to the UMA airport, puts them on a plane to any destination they choose in the United States and will pay for their ticket if they cannot pay themselves and get reimbursement from FEMA. This is insane. There's no, you know, there's never been an immigration, an illegal immigration into a country of seven million people in three years. Well, the logical question then is, how do we fix it? Oh, well, there's plenty of ways to fix it. You just need political will. The key, I, I'd say, fix is appointing enough asylum judges or transferring asylum judges so that these cases get adjudicated before they come across the border. And, you know, it feeds on itself so that if people know you can easily get across, then more and more people come and you need to send the message out that nobody's getting across anymore. And when I went to China and I saw President Xi, I said, do you have a problem with drugs? No, 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 we do not. Oh, uh, why? Quick trial, quick trial. I knew what quick trial meant, right? Quick trial. Unlike our trials that last, you know, 400 years, except if I'm being tried. If I'm being tried, they go quickly. They set records. If I'm being tried for bullshit, they go fast. <laughs> Mine, I'm setting records. They've never seen in Washington, D.C., they've never seen speed like that. Other guys, they'd be in court for seven years. Mine gets done like two months. It's nobody's ever seen. What a, what a two-tiered system of justice we have in this country. It's horrible. It's horrible. But uh, if you want to solve the drug problem, that's what you do. I said, you have no, we don't have any. They used to have a fantastic problem. They used to have a tremendous problem with drugs. It ruined the country, actually. Japan took over China. A smaller nation took over China because they had the opium fields. They had, they had drugs, tremendous drugs, and uh, amount of drugs. And uh, now they don't have drugs. And it's, uh, they do it because uh, if they, they say, if you get caught selling drugs, you get the death penalty, and you go quickly. It's a quick trial. And everyone said, well, let's get the hell out of here. The drug dealer said, uh, darling, I think we're going to head to the United States. Let's sell them in the United States. So that's the way, but I'm not sure this country is ready for it. They should be ready for it because uh, they're destroying our country. They're ruining families. Uh, many people in this room, I'm sure, have been greatly affected by drug-addicted kids who would have never, that would have never happened if you if you didn't have these drugs pouring in, usually mostly over the southern border. But we had it down to a record low for about 25 years just uh, in what we were doing. We built 561 miles of border wall. You know, I always get a kick out of this because they say, oh, you only built 59 miles. No, no. If there's a piece of two by four laying on the ground that's 40 years old and rotted, but it used to be like to stop a bicycle from coming, whatever. If there's a little piece of steel laying there and it hasn't been painted in a hundred years, it used to be there many, many years ago, laying just on the ground flat, nothing else. They consider that a renovation when you build a big monster wall. So they say, no, no, he only built 58 miles. No, no, we built 561 miles of wall. And that's why we had the safest border. That and in all fairness, Mexico giving us 28,000 Soldiers worth billions of dollars, by the way, 28,000 soldiers. I went to the president. I said, you have to give us 28,000 soldiers for the border. No, 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 we won't do that. The head of the State Department, who was very much involved with Mexico, said, uh, uh, you'll never get it, sir. We've been trying to get that for years. You'll never get it. I said, no, we'll get it, 100%. And we'll also get remain in Mexico, and we'll also get... Catch and release. You know what catch and release? We, they catch them and release them in our country. Well, we got catch and release. We release them in Mexico. We catch them and release them in Mexico. And we got nine other things that were just as bad. We got nine other things. You know, your medical component. If you're very sick, you don't come into our country. I'm sorry. You can't come in. You know, we don't want people catching various diseases that were... Uh, very prevalent and are prevalent right now. So we did a great job. But they said that won't happen. And... The chief representative, a very handsome 
guy, good-looking guy, came in to see me representing the president of Mexico, who happens to be a great guy. He's a socialist, but you can't help. You can't have everything, right? But he's a great guy, actually. He's a friend of mine. But I said, you have to do this. But he came over, and I said, here's what we're going to need. I told the uh, person representing, you know, dealing with Mexico from the State Department, I said, here's what you have to do. Give me your top ten things. And I went to Border Patrol, Brandon Judd. I went to Tom Holman. Great. These are great people, by the way. I said, give me your top ten things that you need. Sir, they'll never do it. Tell you what, 100 percent, the person in the State Department, a woman who was really very good, but she never won a battle with Mexico because they wouldn't do anything, right? Because they, you know, they don't uh, listen to our people. So I said, no, they'll do everything. Give me the top ten. So I took the top ten things from everybody, add them up. We took the top ten things, all tough to get. Like, remain in Mexico is tough, right? You know, you don't remain here, you remain. you got to take a look at Tijuana. Until Biden came in, he just let everybody flow right into the country. It's so, it's so crazy. It's so crazy. But I said, no, we'll get him. So he comes in. I said, listen, we need 28,000 soldiers free of charge. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. He looked at me like I was crazy. I said, no, you're going to do that, 100%. He goes, uh, I said, we're going to need to uh, remain in Mexico. In other words, everybody has to remain in Mexico. They can't come into the United States. You've got to remain in your country. And then if we want them, we'll take them. And if we don't want them, they'll go back to their other country. No, 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 we won't do that. Then I said, catch and release. We're going to catch them. We're going to release them in your country. No, no, no. I said, no, you'll do it. No, you will. No, you, sir, you don't understand me. I will not do that. I will not. I said, no, no. Okay, you ready? A hundred percent, you're going to do it. He didn't know what was going on. He didn't understand it. He said, I won't do it. I said, you're going to do it. And here's the story. If you don't do it, I have legislation in front of me that I had the right to sign. I'm going to tax all of the cars that you stole from our country when you manufacture them. You know, they stole 32% of the manufacturing ability of the United States over the years, not through me, before me. Every car coming across and every product coming across from Mexico into the United States is going to have a tariff of 25% on it. And that's more money than all of the stuff that we're talking about put together. And he said, he's going like this. <laughs> Can't breathe, you know? It's like a little choke, a little choke going on. But he said, uh, may I have a few minutes to make a phone call? I said, let me guess, you're calling the president, right? Give him my regards, but try and be back within five minutes. He comes back within five minutes. He said, sir, it would be a great honor to supply you with 28,000 soldiers. It would be a great honor to have all these people, including the criminals, Remain in Mexico. We, we would love to have that. That's just what we want. That's just what we need. Gave me every single thing. And that person in the State Department, a really nice woman, but she wasn't much of a negotiator, frankly. She said, uh, I've never seen anything like it. I've been here for 25 years. I've never seen anything. I got every single thing. Then when Biden came in, he gave away almost all of it, right? Gave away all of it. It's, uh, it's crazy. We did the job and we made America great again. And these people, what they're doing to our country, they're allowing millions and millions of people to pour through just, it's an invasion into our country. And they're coming from prisons and they're coming from mental institutions. Mental institutions and insane asylums and prisons are being emptied all over the world, not just in South America. All over the world, they're being emptied out into our country. We're like a dumping ground. And you know what else is coming in? Terrorists are coming in. And we have to stop it. This Mr. next President. 11 months or 10 months is a very dangerous period. Bobby Kennedy was here last night campaigning in Charleston, West Virginia. It was a packed crowd. I got a few minutes to catch up with him before the rally. I asked him uh, about the border. Here are some of the headlines. He says Texas and Governor Greg Abbott is in the right. Take a look. I believe that under the Constitution, that Texas has a right to defend its border. Under Article 4 of the Constitution, the U.S. has the obligation to defend states against invasions by a foreign country. The President of the United States, I would be defending it. Texas wouldn't have to do it. So I don't think that that would be, a, uh, that would be an issue. Um, the, the President of the United States should be, this is, a, this is unsustainable. It is a, uh, it's really almost, it's a, you know, it's really, it's a, it's a, it's a terrible, it's almost a criminal affront on our country. He has also shifted his stance a bit on Trump's border wall. He says we need some sort of barrier.
think previously you were opposed to Trump's border wall. Are you now in favor of it in some fashion? Yeah, I mean, my, you know, when I went down and saw the border, my mind completely shifted about what's happening down there. And I, you know, that we don't need a border wall from 2,200 miles from Brownsville, Texas to San Diego. Uh, you definitely need a physical barrier in certain parts of the border. I want to start with the border because December, we've just learned, set a record for border crossings. What will you do about that? You know, there's, there's a bunch of things that need to be done to stop the flow at the border, which we need to do. A nation can't have 7 million immigrants coming in undocumented in a three-year period uh, for long. Uh, number one, we need to restore, we need to complete the infrastructure. We need physical barriers, particularly in the urban areas, and you don't need a wall all the way from Brownsville, Texas to San Diego, but you do need physical barriers in the, in the urban areas where migrants can disappear, legal migrants can disappear very, very in seconds, literally. In the countryside, uh, in the rural areas, in places like Big Bend National Park, you need to have surveillance, you need to have long-range cameras, which we had, but the Biden administration took them down. You need sensors, you need lighting systems, and we need good access road, and then we need personnel who are empowered to actually stop the migration at the border on a regulatory, and then we need other, we need to put asylum judges on the border to adjudicate the, the cases immediately. In addition to that, we need to revive the Migrant Protection Act, which the Biden administration disavowed, which allows border agents and empowers border agents to keep asylum seekers in Mexico while they await their asylum determination. Uh, we need Robert, and those Manu, and that, that. Yeah. My, my colleague, Manu Raja, covering Capitol Hill like no one else, last night filed a report. I'm going to read something to you. We'll put it up on the screen. Here's the latest bipartisan proposal. They say that if migrant crossings increase above 5,000 on average per day on any given week, DHS would be required to close the border to migrants illegally crossing. It occurs to me that 5,000, that's 150,000 per month times 12, that's still 1.8 million per year. That's too high. Do you agree with me? Yeah, it's insane. And we need, in addition, the shutting down the border, which I will do as president, we need wide gates. We need to, you know, the the border, uh, the the legal immigration policy was created in the 1960s, and people have to live, wait years to get into this country legally. We need a quicker path to citizenship. We need to let seasonal migrants in to work. We need there are small business owners all over the country that are that are hungry for workers that are waiting for workers and can't get them, and we need to you know we need to we need the people who wait in line we need to actually make make it humane and and quick for them, and we need to seal the border altogether. It, it is absurd to say that five thousand people a week is is uh, acceptable. Very nice, wasn't that nice? So, this was a great evening, and I want to thank everybody in the audience, and I want to thank the people that are standing behind me. You know, uh, I think we called it right. Immigration's a big deal, a big deal, a very big deal. We have millions and millions of people flowing into our country illegally. We have no idea who the hell they are. They come from prisons, and they come from mental institutions. And it's going to — it's just killing our country. And I'm talking about millions and millions and millions. They are drug dealers. They're everybody. And they come in just like walking right through. There's nobody to check, and there's nobody to vet. And we have a man with us tonight, Tom Homan, who is <laughs> central casting. He's central cast. And I'd like you to say a few words about the border and Who's going to solve that problem? And how quick are we going to do it, Tom? Go ahead, please. Look, 
I worked for six presidents, not Ronald Reagan, and every president I ever worked for did something to secure the border. But no one did more than President Trump, the most secure border in my lifetime. The most secure border we've ever seen. And Donald Trump's going to do it again. We're going to lock the border down, and we're going to protect Americans. Because what's happening at the border right now, record number of Americans have died from fentanyl poisoning. Record number of migrants have died. A record number of women and children have been sex trafficked. A record number of known suspected terrorists across the border. There's one man who's proven he can secure the border, and he's standing to my left, Donald J. Trump, and he's going to do it again. Donald Trump and Speaker Johnson at the moment uh, appear to be at least on the same side as slow walking the border plan that uh, Senate Republicans are pushing here, not just Democrats, but Senate Republicans. Obviously, the border is a disaster at the moment. There are people flooding over it constantly. What is your particular plan, if you could give it to us pretty quickly here, because we're running out of time, to fix that border from California through to Texas? Yeah, I, I will seal the border. Uh, I will use physical barriers in some of that. That's a 2,200-mile uh, border, and in some of it, you require physical barriers. The 27 gaps in the wall need to be filled. In the countryside, the rural areas, we need to reinstall the fences. Many of that were, them were removed, the long-range cameras, the video, the, uh, the sensor equipment, and the lights. And we need to put more border patro uh, patrolmen on the border. We need to put asylum court judges. We need to flood the, the border right now with asylum court judges so a lot of those uh, cases can be adjudicated before people come into our country or before they have long stay and be turned back at the border, in other words. And then it, we should reinstate the Migratory Protect the Migrant Protection Act, which requires a lot of the asylum cases to be adjudicated in Mexico if the people are coming from a different country to Mexico. When I was at the border, I interviewed about 110 people coming across between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. in Yuma, and only two of them even had asylum claims. So the rest of them said, I'm here for a job, and those people should not be allowed in our country except through legal yeah. immigration. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people would absolutely agree with you on that. And victory cannot come soon enough. Under crooked Joe Biden, our country is dying. Our country is dying. Our border is open and gushing. It's a big gushing wound, letting drugs, crime, and millions upon millions of illegal aliens pour into our country like we've never seen before. Nothing like this has ever happened to our country before. It's also the number one place on earth for a thing called human trafficking. Number one place. Our border has become a weapon of mass destruction, our destruction. You know, it's our, it's, it's a weapon of mass destruction. It's our destruction. We're destroying our country. And as I've been saying for so many years, this is an invasion. It's an invasion of our country. On behalf of all Americans who want a strong and secure border, I want to express our thanks to Governor Greg Abbott and Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. And the great state of Texas, where we right now have about a 40-point lead for rightly invoking the invasion clause of the U.S. Constitution. It is an invasion. But we didn't need to do it just three years ago. We didn't need anybody's help because we had the safest border in U.S. history three years ago. We didn't need anybody's help. Today, we have a catastrophe waiting to happen. It's a terrible situation. Never had anything like it before. It's the worst border anywhere in the history of the world, and I believe that includes other countries. There's never been a country where millions and millions of people are able to flow in with no vetting, no checking, no nothing. We don't know who they are. We don't know where they come from. They're pouring into our country, and they're coming from prisons. They're coming from mental institutions and insane asylums. They're human traffickers, they're coming in, they're drug dealers, they're coming in. We have no idea, and we have no idea what we're doing with our country. Our country's going to hell because of incompetent or bad people. Terrorists are pouring in unchecked from all over the world. We have more terrorists now. In 2019, I never really believed this fully, but I know we did a good job on it. 
In 2019, remember, they said they had no terrorists. They do these checks. I don't know. None sounds like something Trump would say, to be honest. That they don't. Only Trump would say. They actually have it down. It was, it's a report. And it says none. And then the following two years later, they have record number of terrorists now pouring into our same report. Record number of terrorists coming into our country. And there's a 100% chance that there will be a major terrorist attack in the United States, or many attacks, maybe. And it's all because of what's happened over the last three years. When I'm president, instead of trying to send Texas a restraining order, I will send them reinforcements. Instead of fighting border states, I will use every resource, tool, and authority of the U.S. president to defend the United States of America from this horrible invasion that is taking place right now. There's never been anything like it. Texas will be given full support, and I will deploy all necessary military and law enforcement resources to seal up the final section of border. You know, we built over 500 miles of wall, fortunately, but they are just, uh, what they're doing is just not even, it's not even believable. You know, usually you like to know the other side and you like to know where the other side's coming from. Nobody to this day can explain why this open wound is good for our country. And even politically, why is it good politically? First of all, with a Hispanic vote, we're doing better now than the Democrat Party. So I think it's, I think it's good for us. But we're going to seal the border, complete it, and we're going to repeal the invasion. You know, remember that in 2016 when I campaigned, everybody remembers that we had a very bad border. Nothing like today. And I solved the problem. Then when I ran in 2020, and by the way, got the most votes in the history of any president, sitting president, running for president. We got the most vote. We got more votes than any other sitting president. Think of that. But we had a campaign, and we did great in that campaign. Frankly, we did much better in 2020 than we did in 2016. But something happened. Not going to happen this time. Something happened. Bad, bad things happen, but anyway. But I didn't have the border to run on because I did such a good job with the border that the border wasn't an issue. And I went backstage to all of my people. I said, I want to talk about the border, sir. Nobody cares about the border. You solved the problem. I said, so I did such a good job. I took it out of play. And now I'm saying the border is in play like it's never been in play before, because what they've done is they've taken all of the things that I did to make it so good. Literally, we couldn't put it in a speech. Nobody wanted to hear about the border. We had no border problem. We had the strongest border we've ever had in history. But now we can talk about the border because it's never, ever been worse than it is now. I don't think any border in the entire world has ever been Worse, third world countries would fight with sticks and stones to keep people out in that kind. Of, that's, that's incredible. I believe that the number by the end of the Biden administration will be close to 18 million people. That's bigger than New York State. I believe that's going to be the real number. That's the real number. 18 million people. And who does it hurt the worst? African Americans and Hispanics. It hurts the Hispanics and the African Americans first. And when you look at the poll numbers, how well we're doing with Hispanics and African Americans, nobody's ever seen anything like it. They're a little concerned, the Democrats, the Democrats on the left. It was just announced that 302,000 illegal aliens trespassed across our border last month. 302,000. That's an all-time, by the way, that's an all-time record. There's never been a number like that. Last month, 302,000. That's bigger than most cities in our country. Yet unbelievably, rather than helping Texas to build our border security up, Crooked Joe Biden is fighting Texas to tear 
our beautiful border security down. They're cutting all the wire. Let's cut the wire. Let everybody in. No, no. They want open borders. They could have solved in three weeks. I would have been able to get another 150 miles of wall up. Think of that. Another. All they had to do, the wall was there. All they had to do is put it up. It was all set to be put up. And you know what they did? They sold it for five cents on the dollar. They sold it as scrap. They want to have open borders, and you're going to remember that come November. And now they're trying to blame anybody that they can. They're going to blame your great lieutenant governor who's here. I appreciate it. We're going to introduce him in a second. They're going to blame you. They're going to blame the governor. They're going to blame me. They're going to blame everybody. They're going to blame Leo. They're going to blame Leo 2.0. Look, Leo. They're going to blame you, Leo. But Leo can handle it. That's what they... Leo can handle it. Thank you. But let there be no doubt what Joe Biden is doing is a crime against our nation. It's an absolute betrayal of our country. And it's an atrocity against our Constitution. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. Crooked Joe will not get away with these crimes. He will be tried at the ballot box in November. And you will go back to having the strongest border, even stronger than I gave you. But we'll take that, too. We'll take anything when you look at what's happened to our country. And with your vote, he will be judged and convicted by the American people of this atrocity that he's done. Nobody can believe what's happened. Under the Trump administration, we ended catch and release. Remember catch and release? You know what release is? We release them into our country. Criminals, what do you do? I murdered someone. He comes from a jail. We release them into our country. We got Mexico to send 2,000, 28,000 troops. Remember this, 28,000 troops. And you think that was easy, don't you? It wasn't easy. I had to tell the president of Mexico, we want you to send us 28,000 troops. He said, you have to be kidding. You know, he's a very smart guy. He actually is a great guy. I like him. He's a socialist, but that's okay. You know, you can't have everything. But no, he's a great guy. He said, I'm not going to send you 28. Why would I send you 28,000? Which is what anybody here would say. I said, no, no, you will. 100% sure you will. So now Biden is trying to gaslight the American public by claiming that his border disaster is Republicans' fault. It's the Republicans' fault. Look at these great people, all big, big shot politicians. It's your fault. Even though we had the safest border, the best border in history three years ago, he's actually trying to blame us for the border. And I think it's just disgraceful. And that's what they do. They're a party of disinformation. They will take something, and they feel if you say it over and over and over again, people will start to believe it. This is purely set up by Democrats, and I think they're trying to get out. Join us now with his plan to fix it, independent presidential candidate RFK Jr. Thanks for having me, Steve. It's great to have you. When you see something like that, you know, back in the day, it used to be hard to get in the country. And if they did get in the country, there would be a Border Patrol person there saying, hey, stop. Uh, or you got to turn around. Now, can you explain what Joe Biden's doing? I can't explain the rationale, and I've been down to the border. I, I spent uh, three days in Yuma watching this, and I was astonished. I, you know, between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. in the morning, I watched 300 people just walk across the border. There were buses that were bringing them up to the border that were owned by the Mexican drug cartel, mm -hmm. uh, 100 or 55 people in a bus. And I watched the first 110 people that came over were from West Africa. And I wasn't able to interview them. But then the second two buses that came in, I was able to interview all the people. and. Only two of them had asylum claims. Most of them were from Asia. Right. And um, it's really, it's astonishing that, the, you know, the Border Patrol is utterly demoralized. You could stop this very quickly. And there doesn't seem to be any interest in the Biden administration doing it. Last month, Steve, the, we hit a record of 247,000 
uh, migrants arrested, which means many more were coming across. Right. So, uh, and you know, it's not sustainable. Our country, we've already absorbed seven million right. people in the last three years. And it, the, the, uh, the pilot, whatever their thinking is, is wrong. It's insane. If you were elected president, how would you fix it? I wouldn't stop it overnight. There, you know, I've talked to the patrol. I've talked to law enforcement. Um, what we we need to do is to, to complete the 27 gaps in the in the wall. You don't need a wall from Brownsville, Texas, 2,200 miles to San Diego, but you need the physical barrier in those highly populated zones with. Uh, Migrants can disappear very quickly. So there's 27 big gaps where everybody's coming through. And the rural areas, you need to restore the fences that were torn up right. by, the, by the administration. You need to put in the long range cameras, the lights, the sensor equipment, and then you need, we need asylum judges on the border to adjudicate the cases there. And we need to reinstate the Migrant Protection Act that requires people with asylum claims to remain in Mexico while all those right. claims are adjudicated. And that would stop the flow immediately. Yeah. When I was your president, Hispanic Americans had the lowest unemployment rate in the history of these polls. You know, these polls have gone back a long way, but they never had numbers like you're having today. Today, the polls are beyond anyone. Uh, six, seven years ago, you had actual numbers, not polls. You had actual numbers where they were the best till that time. We're blowing them away. And we're blowing them away with African-American people who are the single most affected people by what's happening at our border. African-American, number one. Hispanic-American, number two. They are being horribly threatened because of what's happening, because millions of people are pouring in. And the real number is 18 million. You remember that, I said it earlier? It's because the fake news wants you to think it's bigger than New York State, bigger than New York State. And that's affecting, that's I think, I have the highest African-American numbers that anyone's seen. And I have the highest Hispanic numbers that anyone's seen. And if those polls are right, that means the Democrats are in big trouble. We better indict Trump a couple of more times. Just go ahead. They're going to indict me right into office. Crooked Joe Biden has devastated the Latino community. Biden's inflation disaster has crushed your household finances. I mean, what he's done to your, your finances are incredible. He's crushed your finances and his open borders policy. They've demolished your wages. His inflation that he caused, it would have been so easy not to. All it was is energy. Remember this, gasoline, fuel, oil, natural gas went up to a level that it was impossible not. That's what caused inflation. And we're gonna bring it down because we're gonna go drill, baby, drill. We're drill, baby, drill. We're bringing it way down. <laughs> and all communities, but again, Hispanic and African American, they've flooded. They've absolutely flooded. He's allowed this to come into our country, coming in from China, from all parts of the world, through the southern border. Four years ago, they, they didn't have that. They had to get, they had to go through hell. I remember I was negotiating the prices of machinery that would capture the scent of drugs. And we had great stuff. By the way, you know what the best machine is? A German shepherd, a certain German shepherd. There is no machine that is comparable to our dog. We, is that a, a, I just thought I'd throw that out, but it's true. How do we get some more of those dogs? I like that better than spending a million bucks for a machine that doesn't work as well. But it's true, the, the crime and all of the problems that have come in, and you gotta remember, they could have stopped it, but the black community and the Hispanic community are, is affected more than anybody else by far. And so remember that when you go to the polls and especially when you go in November. They, they like Trump. Can you believe it? They like the governor. <laughs> Joe Biden is the most incompetent president we've ever had. He's the worst president we've ever had. It's long past time to act. We have President Trump back in the state of Texas 
literally on the border itself, a place that he's been to many times, talking about all the things that he's done to secure the border. The way you do it is your local police. We have the greatest police. They don't get the respect that they have to get. President Trump is going down to the border because he wants to go down there. That's what it is. The Eagle Pass station in the Del Rio sector where Trump is headed. One week ago, a beautiful 22-year-old nursing student from Georgia was barbarically attacked. The monster that charged uh, charged in the death is an illegal alien migrant who was led into our country and released into our communities by crooked Joe Biden. He's crooked. Joe Biden will never say Lake and Riley's name. Mr. President, do you bear any responsibility for Lake and Riley's death? But we will say it and we will remember it. We're not going to forget her. At the very same time, we have President Biden down in Brownsville, Texas. President Biden has chosen just a a terrible uh, location to go visit this crisis. He's not going to any location where he's going to be able to evaluate what he needs to do. And he announced that he was going to Brownsville after it was already known that President Trump was coming to the state of Texas. The American people want safety and want security at the end of the day. We're going to take care of it. Thank you. You went down to the border and looked at it firsthand. What did you see? I thought I would see a lot of people from Latin America and Central America. But the first group of 110 were all African. There were two more busloads. The buses are owned by the Mexican drug cartels. There were 55 people on each bus, and they were, I interviewed each one. They were from Azerbaijan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, China, Tibet and India. So there was only two families the whole night from Latin America, and they were the only two families who had legitimate asylum claims. The Border Patrol no longer patrols the border. They've become essentially travel agents. They're put on a plane within four days to any destination that they want in the United States. If they do not have money for a plane ticket, the Border Patrol buys them a plane ticket. The Mexican drug cartels are now running U.S. immigration policy. Everybody who came across the border that night knew exactly what was going to happen. The Mexican drug cartels are advertising on TikTok and on YouTube all over the world and saying, you give us $10,000 or $15,000 and we will get you in the United States. The people who are coming through are given a court date seven years in the future, but they are in a a limbo status. They can't legally work. And so they become targeted by unscrupulous employers who hire them usually on construction sites for five or six dollars an hour, which they can't live. So they're still sleeping on the sidewalk and they're dampening the pay for American construction workers, unionized construction workers. There are seven million that have come across over the past three years and it's crushing our country. You know, I work with Cesar Chavez during the last 20 years of his life on pesticide issues. But the other big issue for him during that part of his life was closing the border because he saw what, you know, the migration was doing to to reduce the leverage of legitimate farm workers to demand decent wages and conditions in their employment. That they're absolutely devastating the social safety net. The people who believe that this is the right thing from the humanitarian point of view It's a humanitarian crisis. Joining us now once again to talk about the border, maybe a little energy, a little Bitcoin, is independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, good to chat with you again. We appreciate you coming on. You recently visited the southern border as well. I think much less of a scripted sort of staged thing as we probably saw today. What's the reality at the border? It's actually surreal, Brian. Uh, It's, you know, I watched... I've been down there twice. The first time I spent almost three days down there. And I watched between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. in the morning, 300 people just walk across the border and the Border Patrol is relegated to processing them and then bringing them to the Yuma airport, putting them on planes to any destination they want in the United States. And if they can't pay for the flight, the Border Patrol pays for it and then gets reimbursement from FEMA. There's 8 million people that have crossed illegally, but, but it's, it's all, you know, anointed by the, by the uh, federal policies right now. 
we've adopted this uh, this catch and release program rather than the catch and return program, mm -hmm. and we've abandoned and we've abandoned the Migrant Protection Act, which kept asylum seekers in Mexico while their asylum claims were being processed. Oh, it was it's infrastructure issues. There's a problem. There's problems with personnel, but the biggest problem is a policy problem that could be reversed by the Biden administration literally overnight. Talk to us more about this, because you are a lifelong Democrat. You're running as an independent, and that's why it's so important to get your view on this. Okay, You also live in Southern California, so you see immigration, both legal and illegal, pretty much every day. Tell the, and, and you probably heard my, my sort of off-the-cuff reference coming into this piece, Robert, which is that the border bill, while it may be critically important for funding border operations going forward, Tell our audience right now that it has nothing to do with what has happened, correct? It is a political sort of red herring. I mean, I, listen, I've watched in New York City. I heard the report, you know, earlier on preceding my piece where um, I forget what the reporter was saying, but she was your financial reporter saying that the immigration has actually helped inflation in this country. But... That ignores the actual direct impacts of this huge influx of Im immigrants on our on our social service systems, on our social safety net, and on local economies. New York City is cutting police by five percent. They've cut the fire by five percent. They've cut sanitation and education by five percent. They have yeah. encampments for migrants on their playing field so the kids you know who could not play their sports during covid now can't play their sports because there's migrants on the playing field it's insane to, to try to make the argument that this is a good thing for our country there's no way that you can make an argument for it it is yeah, all right so, we so, have the mexican drug cartels running america's immigration policy who can say that that's a good thing well that, that's why bad. i think there's not and i talk to the immigrants the immigrants aren't, you know, the people who are coming over have been exploited, extorted, robbed, raped. They come over here, they're exploited by, uns they can't work legally. They're, they're exploited by unscrupulous employers who are paying six or eight dollars an hour. And they're, those employers, contractors in New York City, are competing against union shops. We had the strongest border. We had the strongest border in the recorded history of our country, by far. We had it down to a level that they'd never seen before. We built 571 miles of wall. We had it down. We were going to build another 200. It was all done. Then the election was rigged and we couldn't put it up. We had three weeks. It was all there. And all they had to do is put up the slats, put them up. It was all done. 200 miles actually built 300 miles more than I said we were going to do. All they had to do is put it up. And they, you know what? They took over and they didn't put it up. They sold the stuff for five cents on the dollar. Think of it. For five cents. And it's expensive. It's what the Border Patrol wanted. You know, I wanted concrete slabs and they wanted to have steel, rebar and concrete, all three. And they were right. You had to have a fence to see through. I said, what the hell do you have to see through? What are we looking at? They wanted a fence. I did everything, the board, even the panel on top. You know, it's called an anti-climb paddle. You know that? Because it makes it very hard for people. Do you ever watch these people? With 70 pounds of drugs on their back, they go up. They're unbelievable. They're like athletes. But when you have the paddle, the anti-climb paddle, it's very hard for them to get across. So I put the, I gave them everything they wanted. 571 miles we built, and that's why that happened, and that's why we had such good numbers. And then I had another 200 miles that was ready to be installed, so would have been done in three weeks, and these guys said, we don't want to do it. And I said, I said, they want open borders. Nobody believed it. Why would they want open borders? They either hate the country or they're stupid. And they're not stupid because anybody that could cheat on elections the way they do is not stupid. So they either hate the country or they're stupid. So we are going to close up the border like we had it. We had the best border ever. You know, I went to Mexico, and you know this, and I got along really great, but I went to, to them. I told them, look, fellas, 
You got to give us 28,000 soldiers. They looked at me like, what a stupid request. Why the hell would they going like, why would we give him 28,000? You know, they're laughing. They think we're like, we're all a bunch of dummies, right? I said, no, no, you have to, because they've taken advantage of it, including taking 32 percent. By the way, 32 percent of what you had here is right now being done in Mexico. That's over the last 20 years, 32 percent. And they'll take the rest of it, too. I remember the story about the plan. But think of this. So I said, no, you have to give us 28,000 soldiers because we're building the wall and we need protection. And you're allowing people to walk through on the caravans. Thousands and thousands of people coming from all over the world. Yesterday, they had many from the Congo. Welcome to the Congo, people, because — and where do you come in the Congo? Where do you live? Uh, we were in prison. What for? Murder. Oh, great. So they're being put — and who can blame? They're coming from Africa. They're coming from Asia. They're coming from different parts of the Middle East. They're coming from Yemen. We're bombing Yemen. You know, here's this idiot is again bombing, bombing. When I came in, they were bombing. I got it stopped. You don't have to bomb. Every bomb is a million dollars. You know that. One million. Every time you see a little flash, it's a million. But more importantly, you're killing a lot of people. You don't have to kill the people. We don't want to kill people. We want a solution to things. Migrant crime is taking over America. From his very first day, Joe Biden allowed an invasion of our country resettling dangerous illegal aliens from all over the world into American communities to prey on our people. The latest victim of Joe Biden's premeditated border invasion is Lakin Riley. Last week, Lakin went out for her morning jog and never came back home. A Biden migrant has been charged with brutally attacking her, beating her, kidnapping her, and murdering her on the campus of the University of Georgia. This monster should never have been allowed in our country. He was released at Crooked Joe's orders and set loose into our country. The radical left Democrats then released him onto the public yet a second time after he was arrested in New York for injuring a child. How many more innocent victims must be harmed and how much more innocent blood must be spilled until we stop this invasion, this horrible, horrible invasion and remove these illegal alien criminals from our country. As President, I will carry out the largest domestic deportation operation in American history to remove Joe Biden's illegals and murderers, because that's what many of them are. They're from mental institutions, and they're from prisons from all over the world, from Africa, from Asia, from South America, from the Middle East, all over the world. Many of them come from prisons and mental institutions. It's very simple. If they don't go back to their countries, we will never get back our country. Thank you very much. We're so sorry to be talking about this to the parents. They're great people. Lake and Riley will be very, very sorely missed. This should never, ever happen again. Our country is being overrun by criminals, by murderers, by drug addicts. They're all coming in through Joe Biden's horrible open border. There's never been a border like this anywhere in the world at any time. He is a disaster as a president. He doesn't understand it. He doesn't understand how bad it is. It's so bad, the whole world is talking about it. There's never been a case like this. Thank you. How about New York? They just put military on the subways. Military, because the illegals, as he refuses to say, the migrants were harming passengers. I mean, think of it. You're going to work for years and years. You're an accountant. You're a lawyer. You're a doctor. You're a carpenter. You're going to work on the subways. And now they're like a military installation. And you know why? Because the migrants are hurting people. They talk about the beautiful dream of migrants. It sounds so nice, you know, like in a fairy tale book. But some of these people are monsters, a big percentage of. If you go to El Salvador, Honduras, if you go to numerous of the countries, but we're really talking all over the world. The other day, from Africa, the Congo, they had numerous prisoners caught from the Congo. The good news is they all make our prisoners look like very nice people, because our people are much nicer. Our prisoners are vicious, horrible people in many cases, in most cases, perhaps. But you know what? When you look at the people that are being allowed to come all over the world, they're emptying their prisons, they're emptying their mental institutions into the United States of America. 
What can be good about that? What? Is there any reason that that can be good? They're probably thinking they can vote, but they cheat, so they don't really have to do that. They can do it without doing it because they cheat so much. But uh, what can be good about that? And how can that even be good politically? I Mr. President, one of the uh, issues, questions we've been hearing from voters here is, how do you plan to deport the millions of people? I mean, it's probably 12, 13 million people under Biden alone yeah. that we'll, have come we'll here. And how will it work? Okay. It's going to work that we get the bad ones out first. They're coming in from prisons. They're coming in from jails and mental institutions. How will you find them? Alums. We're going to find them through local police. Look. The local police, they're so phenomenal. I love them. They love me. I think I have 97% support. They know everything. They know the first names. They know everything. And it's a new, it's a new category. I don't know if you've heard this, but I came up with this one. Migrant crime. There's crime, there's violent crime, there's migrant crime. We have a new category of crime. It's called migrant crime. And it's going to be worse than any other form of crime. You look at New York City, what's going on where they attack police. They want to fight police officers. Our criminals don't even do that so much, okay? I've never seen they're having fistfights with the police officers in the middle of the street. And we have to do something about it. These are tough people. Don't forget, they're not sending their finest. I know all the leaders of the South American. Well, they really hit you when you said that in 2015. You said they're it sending it. Yeah, and oh, now, I all took these a lot years of later. Um, Everything turned out to be right. Well, CBC um, is telling Unf us that. Unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. Customs and Border Patrol announced yesterday that just in three days, 452 Chinese nationals have been apprehended by Border Patrol. And, Mr. President, 20,000 Chinese have entered since October. Yep. Okay. This is, does this concern you more than other immigrant groups? Uh, probably it would because it's China and maybe what are they building a, an army in between? It was 29,000 people in the last three. Think of that, 29,000 people, and most of those people were young male fighting age. Okay, so what's going on? Look, you want to give the benefit of the doubt, but China was number one. And you look at Yemen, now they're coming in, we're bombing. Here we go again with this guy bombing everything. Bombing everything, gets no respect. He bombs and bombs, they're bombing Yemen. Well, they're bombing and us. we have a lot of Uchi Yemen. Rebels. Yemenis are coming into our country. We have people coming in from everywhere. They're coming in from the Congo. They interviewed some people last night. Where are you from? Congo. Where did you live? Prison. They're emptying out their prisons into What's our the country. first thing you will do if you become president again on the border? I know well, that's going to be your first there's act. There's two things I'm going to do. Number one is drill, baby, drill. And the other thing, equal, <laughs> equal, is we're going to. Look, I had the safest border in the history of our country, recorded history, because I can't tell you about a thousand years ago, but recorded history of the border by far. We had it down pat between guys like Tom Holman and Brandon Judd and unbelievable people that you have on your show. We had a great, all Biden had to do is stay at the beach. You know, he goes to the beach. Somebody said <laughs> he looks great in a bathing suit. So he goes to the beach. If he went to the beach and didn't do it, but he canceled everything. Remain in Mexico, catch and release. We have catch and release, but we had release in Mexico. Why were you against the House, um, against the Senate border deal, the bipartisan border deal? Well, they deal. allow 5,000 people a week, but a lot of people took it a as 5,000 people a day. They said 5,000 people a week, and you read it, and it says 5,000 people a day. Number one, that, but it also made it, it made it much better for the opposing side. It regularized, the managed the crisis you couldn't solve. manage it. It was so complex. You're talking about, first of all, if you want to close the border, you're president. I didn't have any legislation. I had people opposed to me very strongly, including Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan and Nancy Pelosi. That was a little uh, triumvirate. And what I did after a year, I said, you know what, these people, I took the money out. We built 571 miles of border wall, and that's what made our border so good. We did another thing. I got 28,000 soldiers from Mexico. I sent to the president of Mexico, who I really like a lot. I think he's a terrific guy. He's a socialist, uh -huh. but a terrific guy. And he's fantastic, actually, in a lot of ways. I said, we need 28,000 soldiers to guard our border. He said, you got to be kidding. Well, Biden I ended up getting free of charge, 28,000. We had the safest border we've ever had. Now. 
We have the most unsafe, we have the worst border in the history of the world. There's never been a border of any country anywhere in the world that's been like Biden this. has announced, well, they've hinted that he's going to come out with a border executive um, order on, uh, on the border to clamp down on illegal immigration before the State of the Union message. I thought he said he didn't have the executive authority. So I do believe that he's baked in. I don't think he can ever even come close unless people are really stupid, which they're not. The public is much smarter than the politicians. He's not going to be able to change. He's not going to be able to change it. He's destroyed our country. This guy is destroying our country. Do you think President Biden should have used the term illegal in his State of the Union address? I think that President Biden should refer to people with dignity and respect. Should you call him illegal or undocumented? And that's really up to you, how you feel. Do you think it was appropriate for the president to use the term illegal in the State of the Union? No, and he addressed that. Why is it wrong for someone to call someone that entered the country illegally an illegal immigrant? Because it's classifying the human being and no human being is illegal. We all agree on the need to better secure the border and to punish employers who choose to hire illegal immigrants. Stop, process, and deport illegal immigrants. We've got millions of illegal immigrants who live and work here. And illegal aliens should not be treated the same as people who entered the U.S. legally. When we use phrases like undocumented workers, we convey a message to the American people that their government is not serious about combating illegal immigration. Uh, when they charge you just as much for the same size bag of potato chips, only has a hell of a lot fewer chips in it. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you who did notice, the cookie monster. <laughs> he pointed out cookies are, his cookies are getting smaller, paying the same price. <laughs> I was stunned when I found out that's what actually happened. He's talking about missing chips, the cookie monster. Even Democrats' most loyal voters, ride or die, have had it with this cornball. I think of President Biden, he kind of sold a dream that he couldn't accomplish. His famous quote was that for African American, you weren't black if you weren't, didn't vote for Joe Biden. Now, the Biden alliance, consisting of politically correct sheep with coastal degrees, federal bureaucrats, the deep state, androids and big tech, and the media tribe, whose greatest fear is social banishment, are going to run this election like a military campaign. Right now, as we speak, Washington is erecting a fence around the Capitol in anticipation of Biden's State of the Union tomorrow. Not a fence around the border, a fence around Biden, who thinks he needs protection from you while he doesn't provide protection from them. Now, this fence is a sinister symbol to stigmatize half the country's dangerous to justify his crackdown. Even though we outnumber them, they're powerful and will overwhelm you with shame from now until November. They'll call you names, treat you like ogres, threaten you, threaten your job, your family, your status. This will be an all-out war by Biden's alliance against the American people in the name of saving democracy, which is the most cynical part of this. They'll try to separate you from your senses, your instincts, from your conscience. You know what's right and wrong but they'll get in between you and your heart, and they'll make you doubt it. This election will not be about policy. That's the last thing they want it to be. It'll be a blood sport, the ugliest campaign in American history. Now, usually it's the politician who gets destroyed, but now they're targeting you. So prepare yourself and stay strong. Presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. joins me now. So the president of the United States has opened the border. There's over 10 million, he calls them newcomers in this country. They're raping children. One of them just murdered an American girl in Georgia. Is the president a national security threat? Well, you know, it was dismaying to see uh, those hosts on MSNBC, Joy Reid and Rachel Maddow and Jim Psaki, ridiculing middle-class Americans who are concerned about what's happening at the border. What's happening at the border would be unsustainable for and unacceptable to any country in the world. We're watching, and, and it's not racist to say that the Mexican drug cartel should not be controlling U.S. border policy. Right. I've been down there twice, and it is absolutely horrendous. There's 7 million people 
who've walked across the border and gotten free plane tickets, many of them, any destination they want. And as you pointed out, Mayor Adams in New York City has said this is an existential threat to New York City. He was not exaggerating. New York City had to cut its police budget by 5%. Its sanitation budget for 5%, its education and healthcare budgets by 5% in order to pay for the, this influx of immigrants that have come into the city. There are now encampments at Randall's Island, which are on the, on the playing fields for New York's public schools. So for two and a half years during COVID, these kids, many of them on scholarship trajectory, could not play their sports. And it, and it ruined, many of them, it ruined their hopes for a certain kind of life. And today they can't play again because there's Ill illegal immigrants encamped on the street. And now the immigrants are being preyed upon. It's a humanitarian crisis for them as well. I saw it at the border. They've been exploited, extorted. Many of them have been raped, robbed, brutalized by the cartels before they come across. They come here and they can't legally work. So they're, uh, they're preyed upon by unscrupulous employers who play them pay them eight, nine, ten, twelve dollars an hour. There's contractors in New York that are hiring them for those, and then they're bidding against union shops for jobs. So it's hurting everybody. It's crushing it, it's everybody. It's damaging it our really, country. It's, it's crushing yeah, the it's, safety of the streets. It's crushing bank accounts. It, it's kind of crushing just the overall fabric of the society when you overwhelm cities to this magnitude. People are panicking, RFK Jr., that you're going to steal votes from them. I don't know what the game plan is, what, what states you're going to be on. If you're going to be on every battleground state, what does that look like to you? But Jesse, I'll be on the ballot in every state and the District of Columbia. I mean, that's a oh, huge, I'm going to be competing. huge already, amount of voters that are going to be I'm able already, to vote for you. Yeah, well, I'm already beating both President Trump and President Biden among independents, which is the largest cohort. Now, independents are now 52% of the American voting public. This is the first election in history where independents have outnumbered Republicans and Democrats. I'm beating both President Biden and President Trump in young people, people under 35 in the battleground states against uh, among all people under 45. I'm tying President Biden with Hispanic voters and beating President Trump by 10 points. So all of the, the only cohort where I'm, I'm losing on are baby boomers, and when we start reaching them with advertising, we're going to bring them around too. All right. And I'm sure you're going to mention the website because that would help with the advertising. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. Kennedy24.com. <laughs> oh, God. I've been, been down this road before. Thank you, RFK Jr. Good luck. In Venezuela, crime is down. I'm sure you're going to be very happy to hear this. Crime is down in Venezuela by 67% because they're taking their gangs and their criminals and depositing them very nicely into the United States. Aren't you happy? Think of it. Who goes down 67%? They went down. Look at this man. I call him the wall. He's got the nicest suit. I want to get one of those suits. We built a lot of wall. We have the best numbers ever. We're going to put them up here. I think we're going to put them up pretty soon. You're going to see something that's, that just came out that's incredible. But think of it. Venezuela, which was a lot of... Pro that was an enemy when I left. An enemy, and they were ready to fold. Now they're supplying us with oil. I wouldn't have even thought to buy oil from them. But more importantly, their crime rate is down to 60... It's down by 67%. And the reason is they've taken their gangs and their criminals and they brought them into the United States. Oh, wait till you see next year. They'll be pretty soon, they'll be at no crime. Zero crime in the entire country of Venezuela, the beautiful country of Venezuela. In fact, we'll be going to Venezuela for vacations. Yeah, it's built a lot of it. They're sending prisoners, murderers, drug dealers, mental patients, terrorists. The worst of every country is coming into our country now. They're coming from the Congo, Yemen, Somalia, Syria, all over the world. They're coming there, country changing, country threatening, and their country wrecking. They're destroying our country. They're destroying, you know, 
We can drill and we can get the oil going. We can get, but this is a tough one. We're going to end up with the largest deportation in American history. We have no choice. Have no choice, right? Have no choice. We have no choice because that's not sustainable by any country. Last week in Grand Rapids, uh, in Grand Rapids, they previously deported illegal alien criminal with multiple prior arrests, many, many arrests for drunk driving, breaking into houses and probation violations was charged with savagely murdering 25 year old Ruby Garcia. Beautiful, perfect, beautiful, wonderful young girl shooting her repeatedly with an illegally purchased handgun and dumping her body on the side of a highway to die. Under the Trump administration, we deported this monster. Long ago, we deported him, but under crooked Joe Biden, he was allowed to trespass back into our country and kill beautiful Ruby. Last week, because we had the strongest border and the safest border in the history of our country, and now we have the worst border in the history anywhere in the world, we have the worst border. Last week, another illegal alien criminal was arrested in Alabama for raping a mentally incapacitated 14-year-old girl. And in Chicago recently, an illegal alien gang member who was released into our country by crooked Joe Biden was arrested for a drive-by shooting that left a 27-year-old woman riddled with bullet holes all over her body died. I'm here tonight to declare that Joe Biden's border bloodbath, remember they used the name bloodbath, I was talking about something entirely different, but this is a border bloodbath, ends the day I take the oath of office, it ends. With your vote, I will seal the border. I will stop the invasion. I will end the carnage, bloodshed, and killing. And we will crush the human traffickers. You know, they traffic in women, mostly in women. We will vanquish the child smugglers. And we will liberate this nation from Crooked Joe and his migrant armies of dangerous criminals once and for all. This is an invasion of our country. And by the way, hundreds of thousands of people between the drugs that come in the border and all of the death that's brought into the border in so many different ways. Hundreds of thousands of people are being killed in our country every year. If we had a war with a country like Mexico, we wouldn't lose people like that. This is bigger than a war. Joe Biden is so weak on the border that other countries are now publicly taunting and extorting him by pumping migrants across our wide open border. They're opening their jails and they're opening their mental institutions and they're bringing them right in and nobody stops them. Nobody, nobody has any idea what's going on. Just this week, Mexico's president declared that they will keep the flood of illegal aliens pouring in. They're going to pour into our country unless Biden hands over $20 billion a year just to sit down. Do you think he'd say that to me? And I know him. He's a friend of mine. He's a nice man. He's a socialist, but you can't have everything, right? right? These young guys can't have everything. At least he's not a communist. He's a socialist. Never got to communism, although who knows? That could be, that could be next. Look, $20 billion a year they want just to sit down, and he wants it fast from U.S. taxpayers, lift sanctions on communist Cuba. That's what he wants to do, so that uh, that's the end of the Miami Cuban vote for crooked Joe Biden. I can tell you that. He wants to lift the sanctions on Cuba. I had sanctions in Cuba to a level that they were willing to make a deal at any time. We would have had that election. If that election were a legitimate election, we would have had a deal with Cuba. We wouldn't have had Russia attacking Ukraine. And we wouldn't have had October. We would not have had October 7th in Israel. I can guarantee you that. But we will... Do all that we can and grants. Think of this. They want to grant mass amnesty, mass amnesty to millions of illegal aliens all throughout the United States. They want to give a mass amnesty. Other than that, he's doing a great job on immigration, right? This is the worst president in the history of our country. If I was president, no world leader would ever dare to talk to America that way. And they didn't. They had respect for us as a country. They respected me. You know, uh, if you look at Prime Minister Orban of Hungary, he said, the only way you're going to clean up this world is if Trump becomes president again. I said, that's nice. 
I actually believe that. They asked him, what's going on? He said, you got to have Trump, get Trump back. You got to get Trump back, he said. He said, he said, China was afraid of, I don't want to use the word afraid, I'm just quoting him, because I like to say they respected me, but you know. He said, China was afraid of him, Russia was afraid of him, North Korea, everybody was afraid of him. The only way you're going to clean it up, I happen to agree with that, though. I think the only way, because this guy, he can't put two sentences together. Biden, he can't find his way off a stage like this. He got stairs all over the place. Secret Service has to come and take him out of off the stage. In this case, we have some very nice people up here. I don't know how the hell they got here, but they're, but they're very nice. And you would help him off the stage. I don't think they would, actually. I really don't. Joe Biden is not respected and Joe Biden is not feared. He does, they don't care about him. The only thing he's good at is cheating on elections and disinformation. <laughs> disinformation. You know, if pilots come in, he says, I used to fly planes. If truckers come in, he says, I used to, I used to truck. I used to drive a nice truck. <laughs> His biggest lie of all, he said, did you ever see him swing a golf club? He's like this. <laughs> He said he was a six handicap. He's not a six handicap. He's not a 36 handicap. Under my leadership, America soon will be respected again, very quickly, respected like never before. Respected like never before. Joe Biden's flood of illegal aliens is not just bringing in massive crime, it's also bringing massive costs and massive problems, big problems. Problems like we've never had a country like this, honestly. Hey, we've been here a long time. We've loved our country a long time. We've never seen such disrespect. Even the way China talks to us, like we're children, they never talk that way to me. They're not going to talk that way to me. Look no further than the small town of Whitewater, Wisconsin. Does anybody know Whitewater? After being inundated with Biden migrants, this tiny town now has a budget shortfall of over $400,000. Their public schools are straining with hundreds of new migrant students who don't speak a word of English. Their police force is being diverted from traffic stops to migrant crime, our favorite new term, migrant crime. It's a new category of crime. And their town is becoming a hotbed of cartel activity and illicit drugs like nobody's ever even envisioned before. A vote for Trump is a vote to save Wisconsin and it's a vote to save your country. This country is finished if we don't win this election. And I heard somebody say it, a scholar say it, uh, two, three days ago said, if we don't win, this may be the last election our country ever has. And there could be truth to it. That's where we're going. Because Joe Biden is a threat to democracy. He's the threat to democracy. Thank you. Thank you. terminate every open borders policy of the Biden administration and begin the largest domestic deportation operation in American history, starting with all of the criminals that are pouring in, the criminals and the terrorists. And you know who's going to tell us who they are? Our local police. Our local police, because our local police know their names, their middle names, their phone numbers. They know everything about them. One of the most important issues in this race will be how Joe Biden's border invasion is also going to obliterate Medicare and Social Security for American seniors. What he's doing by allowing millions, 15 million, 20 million people this year, it'll be, I think it's already 15, he's destroying your Social Security, he's destroying your Medicare and many things else. He's also destroying your way of life. If the millions of Biden migrants are allowed to stay as Joe Biden intends, they will cost taxpayers trillions and trillions of dollars and Medicare and Social Security will buckle and they will collapse. You know, it's very tenuous. You understand that? You can't do it. No country can sustain what's happening. We are being invaded and invaded by a lot of people that are people we don't want in our country. I will never, ever let that happen. Social Security will be strong and powerful. Medicare will be strong. You deserve it. The Treasury will be raped, plundered and robbed a bear to pay for welfare, free health care, free housing, food stamps, Medicaid, and countless other public benefits. And 
Think of it, the legions and legions of Biden migrants pouring into the it's really becoming a third world country. We are actually becoming, if you think about it, a third world country. And we're not going to let that happen. We're not going to let it happen. So to every Wisconsin voter, if you want to help Joe Biden wheel granny off the cliff, remember what they had? They had that with Paul Ryan, not my favorite person, by the way. I remember after I won the election in 2016, I had a like a hall very much like this was packed. And I introduced Paul Ryan. The place booed the hell out of him. I said, I guess they don't like him too much. That was when they used to like him by comparison. They like him a lot less now. If you want to help Joe Biden wheel granny off the cliff to fund government benefits for illegals, then vote for crooked Joe Biden. But when I am president, instead of throwing granny overboard, I will send Joe Biden's illegal aliens back home. You're going back home. And if they know that, remember this, if they know that, they're not coming. You know, the problem is Biden got up and he said, welcome, everybody. Welcome to the world. We'll give you free education. We'll give you everything. But welcome to the world. And they came and they're coming now. There's a massive caravan right now coming through Mexico and nobody is stopping it.